I'm going to be walking through how we can take a Docker container from our local computer and put it onto an EC2 instance that we're running in AWS. And in this example, I'll be using Flask, but honestly, anything you can Dockerize, you can upload it to an EC2 box and run it there. And so I'll get started. And just to show you guys what this thing does locally, I'm on my Mac right now. This is an M1 computer, so it has the ARM CPU architecture. Um, if I run this command docker compose up dash dash build, it's going to go through the uh, process of building the image uh, and then running it as a container. And so now if I open up a web browser and I go to my local host port 80, we can see that uh, I'm getting a response right now from my uh, computer. So I'm hosting a little Flask app in Docker. I'm running Docker on my Mac. And so we're gonna go back to here. I'm gonna press Control C to cancel this process. Uh, and then um, now what we're gonna do is we're going to walk through the steps of creating an actual EC2 instance to get the EC2 instance to be running my Flask app for me so that I don't have to run this on my local computer anymore. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a web page right here with my AWS console signed into it. Uh, I'm gonna click on EC2, or you can type in EC2, and I'm going to launch an instance. And I'm gonna give this thing a name, I'll just call it EC2 Docker, you can call it whatever you'd like. Uh, and in terms of the operating system image, uh, I'm going to choose AL2. Um, and so we're gonna be using that for this demo because I'm trying to keep everything here on the free tier. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it at the x86 architecture. This was a very important point for me because um, I can't take the direct Docker image that is built on my Mac because it's an M1 ARM chip and put it on this EC2 instance because it's an x86 chip. So we're gonna have a workaround, which is we're actually gonna put the Docker file onto the uh, EC2 box and then build it there, which also is gonna save some data transfer speeds and stuff like that too. Um, but stick with this. This is the only way you keep it on the free tier and I'm cheap. Um, we're gonna again leave it on the T2 micro and um, for a key pair, you need to have one. I've already created one. It's very simple to just create one. Um, you guys can look up how to do that, but I'm gonna be having this. And when you do that, it'll create a PEM file. You'll need to make sure you've saved that PEM file locally to your Mac. This is how you're gonna authenticate to your EC2 instance. Um, down the road, and then we're going to be creating a new security group. We're gonna be allowing SSH traffic from anywhere. Obviously, this is not a production environment, otherwise I'd be a lot more strict about that. We're also gonna be allowing HTTP traffic and HTTPS traffic for our web server, just so we can make sure that it works by sending it a GET request on port 80. Um, and so, uh, aside from that, we're gonna keep it uh, under 30 gigs for the uh, storage, and then we're gonna click on Launch Instance. So, we're gonna give this thing a moment to finish uh, launching. So we're going to click here and uh, we're going to wait for this thing to get into the running state. All right, so this instance, I can now click on the connect button right here and we're going to be using uh, the EC2 instance connect. So there's a default uh, user on the uh, AL2 image or AMI. Um, and it's called EC2, so we're able to just connect right to it uh, through our web page like this, which is pretty slick. Um, so we're gonna let this thing establish its connection, and now we're gonna be running a series of commands. Uh, the very first one we're gonna be doing is uh, a yum update. All right, and now that that's completed, we're going to run this command, which is going to um, tell the Amazon Linux extras uh, service to install Docker. So we're just going to run that. Give this thing a moment. And it's going to ask us if we're okay to proceed. Make sure you put Y for that and not anything else. Otherwise, it'll cancel out. Okay. And now that that's done, we're going to actually start the Docker service on this EC2 box. So we're just going to run that command. So now the Docker service is up and running. Um, another thing I'm going to do is going to run this command right here. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're modifying the user permissions for the EC2 user who we're signed in as to basically grant them uh, access so that we don't always have to run sudo every time we want to uh, do some kind of Docker command, which will help save some time and some frustration later on. Um, that's very quick. And then uh, the other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to run this command pwd just so we can see where we're at. And I'm going to make a dir on this thing. And I'll call this, you know, 
downloads, whatever, you can call it whatever you'd like. Um, we're gonna change directory into our downloads folder. And so um, that's all we're gonna do here for the moment. I'm gonna go back to uh, my PyCharm terminal uh, app and uh, all this stuff is on GitHub. So I'll give you guys a link where you can clone this exact repo. Uh, and I'm going to clear my terminal there. And so uh, the very first thing that I'm going to need to do here is inside of my project, if I run LS, you can see that I don't have a PEM file but we're gonna be using SCP in order to upload the uh, files here to the EC2 instance. And so I do have that PEM file saved already on my Mac and I've called it uh, VS uh, KP1. So we're gonna paste that in and I'm just gonna okay. And I don't need PyCharm to try to open it. Um, so I've got my PEM file here and obviously you'll have your own unique PEM file because uh, this will be specific to your AWS account that you're creating. Um, but basically with this PEM file, I'm going to be running the next command here, um, which is we need to modify inside of this directory uh, the permissions on this PEM file to be read-only so that we can actually use it for uh, authenticating to the EC2 instance. And then the next thing, if you don't run this command, you will get an error message when you try to run SCP to upload it to our instance. But I'm going to run... Um, this so the command is scp i and then we're going to put in the path which is that local pem file so this is how we're authenticating and now what we're going to do is we're going to tell scp what are we uploading and where is its destination so we're going to be uploading the docker file app.py as well as requirements.txt and specifically this is going to go to that ec2 user account at and then now we need to look up the public IPv4 address of our uh, EC2 instance. And if you're using EC2 instance connect on AWS, they tell you what the public IP is for this guy. So I'm just going to copy that and we're going to paste that right there. And then we're going to do a colon. And now also we have to tell uh, SCP where on this EC2 instance, do we want to actually save this stuff? So now that I'm in my downloads directory, if I run PWD to print the working directory, I can see the full path uh, of this thing. So I'm just going to copy that, go back to here, paste that in, and then we're going to uh, try to run this command. It's gonna say, are you okay with this? I'm just gonna type in uh, yes. And you can see that now what's happened is uh, we've successfully uploaded just three files, so it's tiny, uh, to our EC2 instance. So if I go back to uh, Chrome, which has our EC2 instance connect on it, and I run ls, you can see we now have these files that came from our local computer. Um, so now that we've done that, the next step I'm gonna do here is I'm going to actually build this Docker container. So I'm gonna run docker build dash t to tag it. We're gonna call this whatever we want. I'm gonna call this EC2 dash flask, so that's the image name and then we're gonna tag it, I'll call it v1.0. And um, we're also gonna pass the dash F flag and say to build this off of the Docker file. Uh, and I forgot to do that, but I need to have a space and then a dot right there. And so I'm getting this permission denied error. If you do get this error, um, what you need to do is in your command, you need to type in sudo to have those elevated privileges. And so now what's happening is based on the contents of the Docker file, uh, Docker is building us an image from it. So it's actually downloading uh, everything that we need. So that just finished, that was pretty quick. Um, and now what we're gonna do is uh, we can see the image that we just built by running the command sudo docker images. You can see that we now have that EC2 flask v1 image that we just created. The next step here is we're going to actually run this image as a container so we can turn our little EC2 box into a Flask app just so we can play around with it and test it. Um, and to do that, I'm going to run this command. So uh, we need that sudo docker run dash t, and then we're gonna pass in the uh, name, I'm sorry, sudo docker run dash d to run in detached mode, dash p to assign the port bindings. So I'm gonna be assigning port 80 on the host, that EC2 box, that's gonna be what uh, where those HTTP requests go. And that's gonna to go to port 5000 on the container, which is the default port for Flask. Um, and so we've done that. We're now gonna give it the image name, which is that EC2 Flask colon and then v1.0. And um, we're gonna run this command right here. 
And so we're not getting any uh, response because we're running this in a detached mode. But now if you want to actually see your Docker container running in real life, if we copy this IP address and I open up a new tab and I paste this in and I go to port 80, you can see that we're not getting a response from our Flask app running in a Docker container on our EC2 instance. So this was one method to very manually upload and run a Docker container on our EC2 instance. I'm all in the free tier here. Um, if we want it to be a little bit more nuanced and sophisticated, uh, we can start using ECR to actually upload our uh, build artifacts from our local computer uh, or from like a build server to uh, a staging place like ECR, which would then put them onto our EC2 box. Um, but you know, just for understanding this concept, I think this is a, a good start. Um, the other thing I'll say here is now that our container is running, if we run the command at docker ps, and I need to have the sudo, um, you can see that we now have our container running. And so if you wanted to actually stop this, you would run sudo docker stop and then paste in that container ID. And now if we go back to here and I try to hit my page again, you can see that it's not working because our docker container is no longer going to respond to our requests. And so um, that's part of the cleanup once you're done playing around with this thing. And then the last thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to close out this tab. We're going to go back to the EC2 instances homepage, and I'm going to make sure to go to my instance state and click terminate because I don't want to be billed for this stuff when I'm not using it. So um, that is the cleanup, and that is how you can get started using uh, Docker containers on an EC2 instance, all in the free tier. So this is helpful stuff. Thanks all for watching. Look for any questions, and be well.